if we zoom in, so this right here is um, my looking glass. Oh, it looks pretty damn good. If you go in closer and closer, everything's going to become straight. So, <laughs> oh boy, Papa Flemmy has found a cure for homosexuality. If you zoom in much, much more, then everything's going to be straight. <laughs> Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Welcome back to another video. Today we are going to derive the formula for the arc length in two different coordinate systems, Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates. You can advance this idea pretty easily to other coordinate systems, for example, spherical, cylindrical, or even toroidal coordinates, probably. But we are just going to deal with those main two because that's what you are going to use most of the time when calculating the arc length. So what we want to do, we want to take a look at a little curve, okay? So let's say we have some curve right here and it's bounded between two endpoints, you could say. So T1 is our lower bound and T2, for example, is our upper bound. Just for clarification purposes, what would happen if T1 and T2 are at the same spot? Meaning we have something like this right here, then well. That's what you call a contour and in the end we are going to end up with a contour integral. Little spoiler alert. We call this curve right here simple if it doesn't cross itself. So for example, this curve right here isn't simple because it does cross itself. But we don't want to talk about this right here. It was just for little um, yeah, clarification purposes. We are just going to talk about this right here. That's just a special case in the end. That's the contour. So we want to get the arc length of this thing, meaning the length of this line. And we're going to do a little approximation now. We're going to call the arc length L and we want to approximate it, like I said. What we can do, we can split this curve up into many, many little line segments. So why not approximate this right here using straight lines? For example, we have this line, delta L1. Then we are going to take this line, delta L2, up until we have all of this stuff done. Okay, and that's going to be our line approximated a little bit. So we are going to take the sum from let's say k equals to 1 to n. We are going to take n different delta l's of delta lk. And what we want to do now, we want to make this partition as fine as possible. Meaning we are going to take as n approaches infinity, we are going to sum up infinitely many little small line segments to get a pretty good approximation of this L right here. So for n to infinity, we are going to get a sum running from, well, k equals to 1 to infinity of our delta L case right here. And yeah, this thing right here is just a Riemann sum definition of, well, that right here is just an integral from our endpoints t1 to t2 of, well, now it's a dl in this case. And yeah, this right here is already a formula for the arc length, but this doesn't make too much sense at the moment. So that's one of the formulations, but we can do better. So we can do way better than this right here. Why not take a look at our DL right now? And we are dealing just with a planar curve, so we can do some physicist's game right here. So we had this curve right here, okay? and. This right here is nothing but our DL at the moment. If we zoom in, so that's a really, really infinitesimal small little line segment. If we zoom in, so this right here is um, my looking glass. Oh, it looks pretty damn good. Then we are going to have a straight line segment. If you go in closer and closer, everything's going to become straight. So. <laughs> Oh boy, Papa Flemmy has found a cure for homosexuality. Not an offense to any homosexual people out there, but if you zoom in much, much more, then everything's going to be straight. Even you, my boy, I'm looking at you, Charlie. No, ju just fun. So, we are going to have this DL segment right here. It's going to consist of, well, one part, dx, that's a really, really small portion of the x-axis, and one part of the y, a really, really small portion of the y-axis. And as you might notice, we can always construct the right triangle, so that's quite good. Meaning we can use Papa Pythagoras to get that 
dl squared is nothing but, well, dx squared plus dy squared. If we take the square root on both sides and dl is positive, it's a line segment. We are dealing with a metric right here, so that's bound to be positive. We are going to get, so dl is strictly greater than zero, that, well, dl is nothing but the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. Okay, coolio. So we can plug this chunk into here. Our region really doesn't change, so we are still dealing with our original endpoints right here on this line. We're going to get an integral from t1 to t2 of, well, square root dx squared plus dy squared. Doesn't look any good right now. Like I said, we are going to play physicists a little bit. You have two choices now. Either you are going to factor out a dx squared, then you are going to get the square root of dx squared. dx is a positive line segment. Square root of dx squared is going to be the absolute value of dx, but since dx is positive, it's going to be just dx. We can either have an integral running from t1 to t2 of, well, square root 1 plus dy over dx squared, this whole thing. I was factoring this stuff out, integrated with respect to x, or you can choose the other path. Take the integral from t1 to t2 of the square root. Well, now we are going to factor out dy, same argumentation as before. You are going to get, well, 1 plus x differentiated with respect to y squared integrated with respect to y. And those are the two choices you are going to mainly have in Cartesian coordinates when calculating the arc length of a curve. So, yeah. This is what we have right here and we can easily convert this into polar coordinates. I'm going to do this on the next chalkboard. So, we had calculated this before, but I don't know if we can actually use this, but we are going to take a look at this right here now at first. Instead of just looking at small parts of those line segments right here, why not take a look at small changes of slope? Meaning, what we can do we are dealing with differentials in one dimension right here at the moment, so it really doesn't cause us any problems to divide both sides by dt squared, for example. So if you are playing physicist, we can just divide both sides by dt squared. And everything's fine, so that's still a formalism that does work. It does look ugly, but it does work out. Meaning, this right here is nothing but dl dt squared, this is nothing but dx dt squared, and this is nothing but dy dt squared. What we can do now? Well, we can take the square root once again. We want our dt's to be positive, not really line segments differential, so those are positive. Meaning, we are going to get that dl dt is nothing but, well, square root of dx dt squared plus dy dt squared. And this is what we have right here. What we can do now, we can multiply both sides by dt right here to get an expression for our dl. What we basically did, we have parameterized this equation right here using, for example, time segments. So we want to fit time-dependent functions, for example, into here where our coordinates change over time. That's what you have with polar coordinates, for example. Okay, so that's what we have right now. We can plug this into here, basically, instead of our dl that we had originally. Okay, now we are going to get dx dt squared plus dy dt squared integrated with respect to t. This is what we have now. And now, like I said, we want to take a look at polar coordinates. I want you guys to remember, I have derived them before in several videos, that if we take a look at the x-coordinate and polar coordinates, we are going to get r with respect to t, now time-dependent, times the cosine of t, and for y we are going to get r with respect to t times the sine of t. Okay, time-dependent function, you can even um, work with an angle, for example. So instead of t, you are going to choose an angle. It really depends on your function. Now what we need to do, we need to differentiate both equations with respect to t. That's what we have right here. Meaning, I'm going to put it like that, x dot is nothing but dx dt in this case. It's nothing but, okay, we have to use the chen lu right here. So we are going to get r dot 
cosine of t, where r dot is just a uh, um, differential with respect to time of our r that we have right here. Plus, okay, cosine differentiated is going to give us negative sine times r. In normal case, you would have to take the differential of t with respect to t, chain rule right here, but well, that's just one. Okay, same spiel for y. y dot is now nothing, but okay, first part is analogous. And then sine differentiate is nothing but the cosine, so positive r times the cosine of t. Now we can plug this chunk into here, actually. We're going to get an integral running from t1 to t2 of square root. This chunk squared, we are going to get, I'm going to put it in two lines so that you can see better what is going to cancel out in the end. That's nothing but the binomial theorem, so r dot squared sine squared of t minus sine um, cosine, I'm sorry, cosine squared of t. <laughs> Don't want to do any mistakes right here. Then we have the sine of t, cosine of t, r dot times r. Okay, this is just this middle part. Don't forget your two. You're going to get it two times by normal theorem. And then positive sine squared of t, r squared. Okay, this has been this chunk squared, plus we are going to add this chunk squared to it. r dot squared sine squared of t, positive two times sine of t, cosine of t, r dot r. And also we are going to get plus r squared cosine squared of t. All of this is still in the square root and we are going to integrate with respect to t. I'm terribly sorry, I don't have too much space left right here. That's such a small chalkboard, it's really hard to find a pattern here where you can write the best the most effective. Okay, you can easily notice that this right here and this right here is going to cancel out. It's the same term, just the additive inverse. Also, we can factor out the r squared right here to get r squared times sine squared plus cosine squared plus sine squared times cosine, uh, but sine squared plus cosine squared is nothing but one. So effectively, we are going to end up with an r squared. Same spiel here, we are going to factor out the cosine squared and the sine squared on this r dot squared term and we are going to get r dot squared. Meaning in the end we are going to end up with an integral from t1 to t2 of square root. Okay, this is nothing but r squared plus and I'm going to write it in a different way. Namely this is the r dt squared integrated with respect to t. And then we are done. So this is basically it. I wonder if you are going to get the same result if you just do it with this formula up here, but you have to do something with the dt right there with the parameterization. Never mind, this is our arc length formula in polar coordinates. Like I said, you can easily advance this idea to cylindrical, spherical, toroidal coordinates whatsoever. If you did enjoy this video, please like and subscribe to my comment channel if you like. I hope this helped some of you Calc 1 students. You know how you can support channel a bit more, support channel on Patreon, buy those t-shirts I created. This is not one of them, this is just a regular blank t-shirt, my boys. And yeah, um, visit my website, my subreddit, also my Twitter, and up until the next video, have a line integral day, I guess. See ya!